story and him and uh, Mr. Schmidt over in GR? Well, I think, you know, um, we're still to discussing, you know, we're still at a grand jury level, and, and, and that will be more telling than anything I can say. Well, did you think what they did was appropriate? Absolutely not. No. Well, I mean, trying to get a guy elected, what's wrong with that? Look, you have ability and you have the, you have the absolute responsibility to try to, 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 to move voters, uh, move members over to your side, absolutely. Um, but to do that through uh, deception at the, uh, you know, at the polls is, is not acceptable behavior. How are you going to use technology uh, here in Michigan in terms of winning races and campaigning? Certainly the experience that you've had on the national level with President Obama, you, you used know, it a lot. Let's just say one thing. That was year-old technology, first off. You know, everyone talks about what the Obama technology. They started those, those campaigns, you know, very early on. And, you know, at the end of the day, by February of 2012, they were, those technologies were set and put in place. And, and they had great things that they couldn't use because they just didn't have the internal infrastructure to take it in. So first off, recognize that was a year, those were, that's year-old technology, one. Two, they, but the, really what they used technology, I felt, was three ways. One was to determine who they were speaking to, right, using the latest data analytics. Um, not just polling, but you know, data has come so far that we can now start looking at past behavior to predict future behavior. Is that micro-targeting the same thing? Uh, it's micro targeting it's, it's much better than that. That's much better than that. <laughs> Even more refined. Yes, like, absolutely. Is How, that data uh, that you will have access to at the party? Yes. Or, okay. And, and, and second, they use technology to understand what's the best way to deliver a message to the undecideds, to the people we are trying to convinced to vote for us. And third, they use technology to, to, um, to deliver that message with validators um, in ways that, again, you know, I would go in there and see my wife and I would be blown away at what they were doing. Blown away. How do you and these were 25-year-olds who had no idea what the words UAW even meant or wow. AFSCME or, you know, yeah. Planned Parenthood. They were just, they, they, they knew, they took the best technologies and Everybody knew how to deliver a message. How do you go after undecideds? How did you find them and, and address them? Uh, obviously not through mass media. Well, you, t tactically, how do you address them? Mm -hmm. You know, well, again, first off, determine who they are. Right, right. Second, determine where's our shared value. And then three, get in front of them with that shared value. This is what we believe. This is what you believe. This is how we're going to put that effect in government. But is that through mailings? Is that through cable TV? What's the vehicle to get them? You well, don't that's, call again, them the technology will understand what's the medium. This, tar this targeting is, is moving way beyond polling. Mm -hmm. We're some understanding people from be them. Approached in some way and other people I don't want to get approached in other well, ways. Absolutely. Come on. I don't want you know, I don't want to get away but but yeah. they you know this okay. data allows us to understand what is the medium. Well, here's something that's been very widely reported for the Obama campaign is a lot of face to face, you know. Uh, you would have volunteers who would identify people in their neighborhoods and be meeting with them periodically. Mm -hmm. um, and this w was starting a year or two out. Is mm -hmm. that something that you would hope to replicate? Absolutely. You know, it's that face-to-face -face contact. At the end of the day, you know, we're going through a geographic paradigm, right, in terms of, hey, these are the neighborhoods you got to go walk. No, 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 no. At the end of the day, these races are going to be determined between, you know, the state house is an example. They're going to be determined between 2,500 and 3,500 voters. You need to be in front of them. And, and you need to go off that instead of some map. So if you've got a single unmarried woman, you find a Democratic single unmarried woman to go talk to her. No, it, it's you actually find the candidate to go talk to them. This takes work, and if you're not prepared to do that, and I'm going to know it, yeah. you're not going to be our candidate. So the candidate has to do that face to face. That's right. No surrogates. That's right. Whew. That's You've more got, than eight thousand. I did eight thousand doors, but yeah. you know, at the end of the day, there's between thirty-five hundred and five thousand roughly voters in these state house districts that right. are making. This, this so th give me the give me the the, uh, the strategy on Snyder. How do you where, where do you hit him first? Well, it's no hitting. Okay. Right. First off, it's it's we, th that attitude of, of hitting yes. is what's costing us these races. Ah, we share the values. The default position of Michigan is democratic. But how are you going to find him? Well, it's going out there and, and showing the voters that we are the ones that 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 share your values. And this, you know, when you look at Governor Snyder, you know this this whole, you know, I'm a nerd and I'm doing the tough things that our state needs. Okay, um, you know. It, 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 I'm the one fighting the status quo. But we need to take a deep look at and, and say, who, who are these policies? Who are they really fighting for? Mm -hmm. And we need to make the argument who he fights for, and who, but more importantly, who we're fighting for and how we will fight. 
When we were talking earlier about Detroit, you mentioned that he was behaving like a CEO, um, making a hostile takeover, and that he was not um, adhering to the democratic process. That sounds like an argument that you'd be making. That's exactly the argument. You know, the, the voters, you know, voters, you know, CEO, a hostile takeover in business is, is one, you know, practice. But when you're governor, we expect our governors to partner with cities, and we expect our governors to practice democracy and to go the last mile. Is, go the last mile. If he sends in an EM M and M eventually, you're going to call that a hostile takeover? Well, I don't know how you know. I, I don't know how what else you would call it. It's certainly not. It's certainly not local control. It's certainly not the practice of democracy, um, as as the voters uh, want that. Isn't he going to say that he's doing his fiduciary responsibility as governor? Uh, that cities have to be responsible to the state. And cities if absolutely. the city is not doing what it's supposed to be doing, if local elected officials aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing, then it's his role and his job to step in and make sure for the good of the state that the biggest city walks the right road financially. That's, we agree. We agree that there's real problems in the city of Detroit and, and, and elsewhere, that, we have, that, that you know, voters and residents deserve trash pickup and police protection and good schools and good roads. But, but you don't abandon democracy and local control. You've got to lean into it and work, because it's hard. Local control and democracy is hard work. You know, this is not a business where you can come in and, 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 and do hostile takeovers and, and expect, we're, yeah, we're in the government business. But they've been being leaned on for maybe two, three years, and it doesn't seem to have made any difference. You keep going. You keep, you keep working. leaning. You keep working. Indefinitely. You you keep working. There's a solution <laughs> to every problem. The solution is lies in democracy and not in hostile takeovers. Well, he would argue that he tried with them. They did a consent agreement. Didn't work out. He tried with Belle Isle. Try harder. Okay. So you sounds you're, like this is your personal you're philosophy <coughs> in business. Pardon me. It sounds like this is your personal philosophy in business. Well, no. This is harder. a personal philosophy of 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 our party. You mm -hmm. believe in democracy, and this is the value of Michigan. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the, the, the Michigan voters' values. You, we believe in democracy with government. And you've got to try harder. You're the leader of our state. Mm -hmm. And you've got to but make you, the other side say believe that the Republicans don't believe in democracy. I, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I believe that, again, I believe the governor and, and, and the Republican Party want what's best for all our cities. But to do that, um, we differ on the approach. I believe, and, and our party believes, that you should partner with cities. You don't cut them off at the knees financially or look at a, 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 f a flawed financial structure and point them out for ridicule, ridicule and not work with them. Well, he's Wait. been very careful not to ridicule the city. You have not heard him say one bad word about Mayor Dave Bing or the city council, have you? Well, I don't know. It's not, it's not that personal politics, but it's point them out for, you know, not you know, point them out for not doing their job uh, on the infrastructure wise we've got to work within democracy no one's no one's i don't I, i'm not accusing snyder here of of calling out and being negative towards being or any voters everyone agrees here what needs to be done what we differ is how that needs to get done do you think some other republicans have been hostile towards detroit in some of their rhetoric well i you know i'll let, I'll let that to, i'll leave that to you you graduated from Rockwood High School? Gibraltar Carlson, Carlson High School. Okay, we so five did you go directly out to Arizona State? <coughs> I did. I went out that summer of 89 when I, after I graduated. You know what, high Arizona school. is the Wildcats. What, what no, you uh, that's the uh, Sun Devils. Uh, the, oh, they're the Sun Devils. You're the Wildcats. Uh, Arizona State was the Sun Devils and oh, U of A was Devils. the Wildcats. Arizona is the Wildcats. All right, so what are you in Michigan? Are you a U of M guy or at Michigan State? I'm more of a Spartan man uh, myself. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> that could be the lead right there, baby. Well, he, he went to Arizona State, not, you know, like Michigan State. Yeah. He didn't go to the University of Arizona. That's a controversial a thing devil. to say, Mr. Chairman. Well, look, you know, you, you, you know, this is about, you know, you got to give your opinion. How you know, about with your this. wife? Where'd she go? She went to Smith. Oh, she went to Smith. So we have so an Arizona State and we oh, have Smith. Oh, so wow. she's so smarter wow, than that's you. That's a combination. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, she's yeah. smarter she's than you. She's absolutely <laughs> smarter than me. <you. laughs> <coughs> with your national connections and with your wife's national connections to the Obama administration, do you expect to see the president come in Michigan a lot more than he has, and particularly coming into the more urban areas, the city of Detroit? Because if there's one thing he's been criticized on is that he's not campaigned in the heart. I would want the president every, uh, as much as he would want to come, to the extent that you know, uh, I can help that, uh, make that case inside um, the scheduling office, uh, I will try. 
Um, getting together with House Democrats and Senate Democrats, have you met with them yet? Whitmer, Grimal, and people like that? Yes. Okay, and what was on the table? What did, what did you say? Majority in both instances. You think What's you have a shot one? at the Senate? You know, we have 10 seats there <coughs> where, that are held in, uh, by Republicans that are in 47% or better Democratic performance. So absolutely. When Is we it? fight everywhere, we win. Is but it easier to win back the House, though? Well, I think both of them present challenges, you know, for the infrastructure, for the redistricting. But we don't, look, life isn't fair, and politics certainly isn't fair. But we just, you know, that 20, you know, having lost 21 out of 26 close races tells you there's something more going on than just the lines. Do you want to follow Brewer's idea of an early convention to pick AG and those other? It's a terrific idea. In fact, I want to do it earlier. Oh, really? When would you like to do it? I don't know yet. Well, it was, when was it last year? It was May? I can't yeah, so. well, May? They, yeah. they did it May, and then they moved it up to March. Yeah, Mark did wonderful things for our party. Look, you have an undaunting ta you got a full ticket to fill up, okay? Mm -hmm. And if I heard your answer correctly on governor, you don't have a name that's on the tip of your lips right now, on the tip of your tongue, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, have you made any calls on that yet? Absolutely. Really? And, well, I, it's not necessarily the calls that I'm making; it's the calls that I'm receiving. There are, you know, look, we. When you look at when you look people at people are calling you to say I want to run for governor. The, the people are calling me saying I want to discuss it. Really? Sure. Can you Absolutely. give me a couple of names? Um, you know, uh, uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Would, Would you like to see someone like Mark Hackle uh, run for governor? There's rooms for our, there's room in our party for for everyone, and Mark is one of the you know one of our <clears> best <throat> assets. Do you think party. he? fits the type of candidate you would like to see? Because you know, as you know, he's uh, not all Democrats are enamored with him, and particularly some of the unions. We have, you know, all ranges of, of, of leadership in our party, and, and Mark is definitely the type, one of the types of leaders that, that should be, uh, that I would hope would be considering this. I know Mike Duggan says he's running for mayor, but have you talked to him about this at all? I have not yet. Will you? Um, you know, I think uh, he's got his hands full right now in his election. If he were to lose, would it be too late for him to turn around and then run for governor? Or is that a non-starter? Well, it's still February. Do you expect that Carl Levin is going to run for another term? You know, that's that's a decision he's going to make. When is and he? Then in, the, in, 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 in a that? number of weeks. <coughs> I think it's we're in the weeks By the end of range. March. You know, he knows that that should he should he decide not to run, that we would have to. To, to find a candidate, but we also, but he also knows that um, should he decide to run, he's got a, you know, he's What's got to put together you? a campaign. What's your gut tell you? He's going to do the right thing for Michigan. But like he always has. Is yeah. it the right thing for Michigan? Him running? You know, we are we are extremely blessed by our congressional delegation. We have one of the most powerful delegations in the country, and he is the, you know, he's our leader. Would you be praying for Justin Amash to run for Senate? Well, I, w I would be, you know, I, I pray every day that uh, that that Senator Levin stays and, and, and keeps fighting for Michigan. Did he tell you it would be a couple of weeks? Yeah, he's, he's told us and, he, and at all the convention, you know, he's been very forthright. Yeah. And he's going to make the decision what, you know, what he thinks. If he best. doesn't run, is the stable of candidates that Democrats might look at for that race different than the ones who might be interested in governor? Or are they kind of the same people? I like think it's absolutely Jones. a difference. You know, there's a difference, you know, and there's like a different Peters, skill set. Would Peters be <clears throat> interested, in your opinion, in the in the eleventh seat, whereas he might not for governor? You know, that's up to the individual. But it you, is a, you it is you have to recognize it is a different job, right? Yeah. You know, the executive versus legislative, it's a very different and, and it takes a different skill set but to, you don't to both have run feel. and to you don't have any feel right now for a difference in the democratic field between one office or the other and who might be interested in which. I absolutely have a you know, a feel for that and, and But you don't want to talk about it. Well, it's still <laughs> early. <laughs> but but this early into your administration to have someone of Carl Levin's stature and longevity to say, that's it, I'm done. Uh, that's got to be a nightmare for you. It's an, it's an opportunity. <laughs> I mean, give, given the control that Republicans have in this state right now, I would think that's one of those conversations you really don't want to have. On the federal level, as you've noted before, we win. And the challenge for our party is to, is to convert those wins to the state. Can you help me refine your earlier comment? Hitting is what is costing us races when I said, are you going to hit Snyder? Mm -hmm. uh, nuance that for me. Michigan is a democratic <laughs> state. We share, we have, we have greater shared values with the voters than the Republicans. We've got to go out there and make our case what those values are and who, what we represent and not just throw stones. And if, if, if you just throw stones, we lose. 
But don't you have to, you have to do both? We have to be comparative, absolutely. Um, but you know, it's you don't have to go out there and and do the traditional you know hit camping. We have to define who we are and where and how we will create change in this state. How we will continue to grow it. How will we make it a place that people can stay and succeed? Had enough? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's only been in the job for a week. That's right. <laughs>